So when, when I came to Harrisburg, a number of people said to me, you have to go to the taco truck. You have to go to the taco truck. And it took me, uh, I, I don't know, maybe two or so years to get up there. And uh, I was told that they're the you know, best tacos in the area and they weren't kidding because you know, they were delicious. So I would go up there uh, periodically and get tacos. And some of my staff, we would have little staff trips to go up there and it was just a, a, a fun little thing to do for lunch. Um, and now you're, you're downtown, so you're much more convenient, at least to, to myself. But uh, tell us why you wanted to open the brick and mortar and go from the truck to the store and change locations. Um, so the, I mean, with any business, like you always want to like expand and get better and stuff like that. And I felt like we were kind of like stagnant over there because we started in 2001 and we didn't change anything for like 18 years about. So it was like a cash only business, like two things on the menu. And then I went to school and studied hospitality management. And I mean, you go to school and you get a ton of ideas. It's all about ideas basically when you're in school. And I started like formulating plans and stuff like that. And then while I was in school, I would like change a few things up every summer. I'd come back, I'd work there. And then something in my mind just said to open a restaurant because the food truck is kind of hot during the summertime and we would close during the winter too. So it was kind of seasonal. And I wanted something more like permanent and something more established. And yeah, and just like we had like a really good product and we had a lot of people that liked this, but not enough people. And I felt like coming down the second street would open herself to like a bigger market and make more money and all that, of course. So why did you personally want to continue in the family business? Because I do understand it's your grandfather, then it was your, your aunt, right? Or mm, your aunt, my aunt and my mom. Your aunt and your mom, because mm. yeah, I remember them as well. Um, and then you decided to pick it up. Why personally did you want to do that after going to college? Um, I, it's just a big, it's, it's really close to my heart. I remember when I was um, in kindergarten, um, my mom would work at nights and my dad in the morning. So there was like a little gap there and they would drop me off at the taco. So I kind of like grew up there from like four to six years old. And then every Sunday, my dad would always just drop us off there and make us like spend time with my grandparents. So I just grew up around the business and it just like meant a lot to me. And I felt like nobody else in the family really wanted to continue it. So, I mean, someone had to do it. So I kind of like took, took motive. Okay. But you went your own way. You established on second street. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just tell us how, how, how that's going. Did it meet your expectations or not? And what's, uh, different from your expectations? So it was like, it was really interesting going from like a food truck to a restaurant. The hour structure was a lot different. We were open up there from like 11 to six and now we're open to 11 to nine. So, and it did be my expectations. Cause I mean, what I wanted was to be open year round, be open longer hours because at the food truck we'd close at 6 PM and we'd miss out on that entire like dinner rush. So I just wanted to move down there and um, be in like a better environment where we could generate more sales and hopefully continue to expand the business in a positive direction. And has that worked out or? Yeah, everything's going well. Everything's going according to plan, thank God. So okay. yeah, like everything's going good. And um, it was rough at first moving because when any business like relocates, you're going to lose some people. But at the same time, we gained a different, gained other customers as well. Yeah, it's a totally different market there downtown, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know that one of the challenges for being a downtown business has been the post COVID situation because you just don't have quite the office workers down there as you used to. So are you experiencing that or are you not experiencing that? How, how are you feeling about yeah, that? Yeah, you could feel it. You could tell when people are in the office for sure. Like the cars are downtown, the parking lots are full. And then you could tell like, because Tuesdays it seems like everyone's at work down there. And then like Wednesdays, it's not as many people coming to the office. And when like Congress is in session and stuff like that, you could tell. And um, but you do feel it. It's, it is a little bit different. And like the whole parking situation kind of like comes into play as well. So, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's sure. I, think, I think everybody I've ever interviewed uh, has a downtown business. Talk to me at length about parking. Yeah, parking is the biggest issue for us. <laughs> but I mean, it is what it is. And it's free after five. So mm -hmm. there's some positive. <laughs> yeah. Where do you think a lot most of your customers are coming from? Are they commuters and, and, and office workers? Or are they residents? What's I'd say majority are um, residents during the week. And then on the weekends, there's a lot of, uh, surprisingly, there's like a lot of tourism in Harrisburg. Like the Hilton has a lot of, they host a lot of events, people at um, the farm show as well. So we'll get a lot of stuff on the weekends there. And the Senators games help out a lot too. Yeah, there's a lot of tourism here. I, I was actually having a conversation with my reporter about that recently. It's kind of hidden. A lot of people don't realize just how much there is, but there's a substantial amount. Mm -hmm. um, and 
you know, tourism and, and visitors, and you're right. I mean, there are a lot of people who are uh, who have conferences and stuff like that, especially especially in the Hilton. So, uh, so I guess that helps a lot of the Second Street businesses. Mm. Um, so, uh, what what kind of things have you changed as far as your food offerings, your menu, et cetera, since moving to Second Street? Um, so we haven't done too much. I mean, we added like a protein option. Like now we sell like al pastor, but when I moved, I wanted, since it was like already like kind of a big transition, I didn't want to get too crazy and like go like crazy myself because in like a restaurant, like adding one thing means like a whole much more prep for something else. And then, but other than that, I mean, we added like quesadilla tacos, like other beverage offerings. We do flan sometimes, but uh, we honestly didn't do too much changing. And that's something that we're trying to do right now is now that we're like, we're established and stuff like that, start messing around with the menu and add more offerings and all that. So at the food truck, I always would get the tacos because, you know, it was a taco truck, so you had to get the tacos. But looking at your menu just recently, I see that you also have burritos and quesadillas and stuff. I, I don't know whether you offer that in the taco truck or, or not before. Uh, we didn't. So I started that probably when I finished, like around like 2020. Like we started doing that because um, a lot of people just, not everybody wants tacos and, and tacos and tortas. Uh, we added like rice and beans and with rice and beans, you can make a burrito, you can make a bowl and it like, it opens things up a lot. Because, I mean, there's not too much variety with Mexican cuisine, especially if you want to make it fast. But that really helped out a lot. We're like the bowls and the burritos because we do, I'd say like burritos are probably like your second sellers right behind the tacos. Did, did you have to change, change anything because of the, the customer mix? I would imagine Well, we talked about how sort of a, a different type of person might, you know, patronize the taco truck versus the brick and mortar. But in addition, I'm assuming that you get a lot more non-Latinos Mm -hmm. at this location than previously and has that influenced your business at all i mean we tr um we try not to like we try to stick true to our roots and stuff like that and be as authentic as authentic as possible like we could add ground beef and we could do other things but we just um we just say to ourselves we can't do that we gotta we had uh, authentic mexican cuisines in the name so we gotta like kind of stay to it as much as we can regardless of the customer i mean it, it would be probably a smart idea but i mean it is what it is okay <laughs> <laughs> um so, uh, and are you uh, planning any changes coming down the pike? Um, right now, I mean, maybe like a different like protein options or maybe um, maybe something like that or more specials. Like we, during like restaurant week, we did have a few specials, like different colored tamales, different flavored tamales or like mole, which is also like a big hit. But um, maybe just stuff like that, because at the end of the day, our goal is to like do stuff pretty fast and like efficient and, and switching things up kind of like. I mean, you could train people to do that stuff, but it, it takes some time and stuff like that. Yeah. And what year did you take over the business? Uh, 2019. Yeah, May of 2019. Okay. And so what's been your biggest or, or among your biggest challenges so far, do you think? So my biggest challenge was moving from the food truck. It was like a family business. It was just me, my aunt, my mom, and my cousin. And moving down here, I had to hire other people and train them and kind of learn how to not micromanage and trust them to like do this stuff. Because sometimes as an owner, you want to do everything. You want to make sure everything's perfect. But that's not a real, you'll burn yourself out pretty fast doing that. And not even that, you're paying people to do their jobs. So learning how to manage people and work with them and train and stuff like that. Yeah, well, speaking of that, a lot of businesses have had problems, especially, you know, post-COVID with turnover and uh, with workers just not showing up and being or just quitting. Um, have you had any of that situation? Yeah. So yeah, we've, we've, we've rotated through some people and it is a challenge at the end, of the, but everyone's going through the same, every restaurant has to go through it, but you just, you just get through it. And I mean, sometimes someone will quit and as an owner, you just have to be there and it's just part of the game. I think you have an awfully good, uh, uh attitude about uh, yeah. it all. <laughs> you gotta be positive. <laughs> right. Well, I've talked to other restaurateurs who are, you know, uh, you know, pulling their hair out and. And, uh, but I have to imagine that you're probably having the same situation as they are with, uh, difficulty, you know, getting good people and then retaining them and et cetera. Yeah. It, it's, it's for sure a challenge because, um, uh, I probably rotated through, I probably had hired about like 12 employees in like the past year. So, mm -hmm. and like training everybody and then they learn everything. And then once they learn everything, they kind of leave to another job and the competition on second street, like pay and, making sure like your labor works into your budget. But 
there's there's people that are looking for jobs. So I mean, it's just it's just tough. Yeah. Has it gotten better? Do you think in the last year or so? Um, I'd say so. Yeah. Right now we have a solid crew. Right now that's been around. I think everyone's been working there for at least like three or four months, and I just hope it stays that way. So. Yeah, I, I would imagine that you have to go through a significant amount of training to get people to uh, like understand what what their jobs are. And maybe if they were in the restaurant field before, well, less so perhaps, but you know. Uh, how how long do you think it takes some of your employees to get up to speed with what you do? Probably at least two weeks. Like you probably have to be watching for a good two weeks. I mean, we've like we try to like streamline our kitchen as much as possible, like pictures on the walls, make it as easy as possible. And but at the end of the day, when you're doing something like a hundred times, sometimes they want to do the ways do the things they want to do. So you just got to be there as like an owner and just oversee things and. And then eventually you'll kind of trust them after a while. So, How do you recruit your people? Um, just put on your window and hiring now. <laughs> and like a lot of people, surprise, a lot of people like walk down seconds where you're asking for jobs and, okay. and just interview them and hopefully they're good people and good workers. So. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have a, a, a network from your family? I mean, you have such strong roots here uh, to try to work that. Yeah. So sometimes like my mom's friends, like if someone needs a job for like a few weeks, like I'll take it like especially if they have some type of experience in restaurants. It's not, it's not rocket science at the end of the day. I mean, you're making tacos and stuff like that. So we try, if you have experience, you can probably catch them up to speed pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but you also have pretty high standards. I mean, your food is, is so good. I, I you know, imagine that you want to make sure you get people who know what they're doing. Yeah, so, and then just the combat that, you just have to have somebody. So my mom helps me out a lot, and she cooks a lot of our food, so... Just having someone watching everybody, making sure everything's going well. You just got to have your oversight on everything, mm. but not too much where you're like micromanaging. <laughs> okay. So, so you've been, so you've owned the business for about four years, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. So is there something that you, you've done that you wish you could undo? I mean, what, what have been so far your, your, maybe something that has been a mistake that you wish that you had done differently? Uh, when I first started off, I wish I would have been better at um, labor, like um, keeping my labor, labor budget tight because, yeah, I mean, it, it messes with the profit sometimes. And just learning how to, uh, like, get the most out of people because sometimes you overstaff people and then nobody's doing anything at that point. And just being better at that is what I wish I would have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. You know, having a business, I would think that I personally think that personnel is the most difficult thing because you know, unless you're went to school and you're an HR manager, you really don't know what you're doing. I mean, you know how to make tacos, right? I know how to report a story or, you know, be a, be a journalist. But when you own a business, suddenly you're managing people and often you're not trained. And that's the most difficult mm -hmm. thing to do, I think. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay. Um, so how do you feel about currently the, I know we talked a little bit about this, about the state of the, down, the downtown um, are you optimistic that things will get better or are you not? What are, what are you seeing? Um, I mean, I see it just staying the same. People come into the office like two, three times a week, probably not coming in on Fridays. And just that, I mean, centers, games, the conferences, I don't see it getting any better. I don't see people coming back to the office more than they need to because, I mean, there's no point for some of those businesses. Uh -huh. I, so, I, so I guess if I want to get in and out quickly, I should go on a Friday. Yeah, okay. it's, I mean, a lot of people don't come to the office surprising, but we get busy at night. I mean, we have like our give and takes with our, with like our peaks and stuff. Yeah. You know, so when, when are you busiest? I mean, what, what is, what is your, your average kind of work day like? So Tuesdays are really busy taco Tuesdays and we are closed on Mondays. So every kind of, everyone wants tacos, it looks like. And then Friday nights, Saturday nights and Sundays have been going really well for us because a lot of the businesses downtown are closed and it's just us and another handful of places. So we do pretty well on those days as well. Okay. And how late do you stay open on the weekends? Uh, on the weekends until 9 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. And then Sundays we stay open until about five. Okay. And, and do you see like a lot of late, later night business on the weekends? Um, not really. I mean, just people that are walking downtown. We try to close before the bars because we just, yeah. we never really wanted to get into that type of, business like staying up until 3 a.m. I wasn't really interested in that. It would be it would be good for money, but I'm not sure how good it would be for my mental health. So Pro I decided not to. <laughs> probably not too good. Yeah, yeah that's what I was saying. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So even so 
Do you plan to stay at your location, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I have a lease here until 2025, so I'll definitely be there until then. And then when the time comes, we'll reevaluate and see what, like, what direction we'll go in after that. But hopefully I could be in downtown for hopefully like a decade, and that'd be nice. Okay, so you're not going to flee to the suburbs anytime soon? Not like, soon. You know, I mean, if we do, it'd probably be like a second location. Okay, so. that's okay. okay. But we need you here. Yes, yeah. Uh, I, I need you having tacos within walking distance of my house. We'll try to make it happen. <laughs> okay, well, you are now. Um, okay. Um, and how about uh, being a business owner in this city, in Harrisburg? Do you, do you find uh, that you get support from, you know, the city if you, if you need it? Or do you think there are any unique challenges, like, well, parking, I guess, about uh, being a, a business owner here? Um, so it's interesting. I mean, the, I forget what it's called, but the Harrisburg development, um, and I forget what it's called, but it's right over on, um, Walnut street. They like shout us out on Facebook, but I mean, you don't get too much support at the end of the day, but, um, as a, I'd say like as a, as second street in general, I mean, we all like support each other. Like I know like Milan over at Burger Yum, um, the people over at Zembies, like we all like know each other. We're, we're downtown all the time. We spend more time there than in our houses, I think. So, I mean, we support each other and not too much from the city itself. I mean, they'll order lunch here and there, but, mm -hmm. but I mean, we all got each other's backs at the end of the day. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that there was a kind of com camaraderie, you know, among the business owners, yeah, the that's restaurant sure. owners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, that's good. Um, so do you, uh, do you, I guess we talked about this a little bit uh, before. I was wondering if you in five years see anything different coming down the pike for yourself? I mean, our, like right now, um, so we just completed a year this past June and right now I'm, I'm pretty well established in this location. We're well staffed and all that. So hopefully the next step is going to be opening another unit somewhere. I'm not sure where either on the West shore or like lower Paxson or something like that, but that's what I'd like to do to see how it feels like to run two locations. And then, I mean, just take steps. Like you can't get to 10 without doing the second one. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so then you're, you're happy with your decision to take this over. I mean, it's a pretty, you're pretty young when, when you started and, yeah. and I mean, obviously you had experience because you worked, you know, in the family business. So you sort of knew what you're getting yourself into. Um, but it is a, a pretty young age to come out of college and immediately start a business, mm -hmm. but you're, you're happy with your decision. You're glad that. Yeah. I mean, I'm you young went. right now. I'm full of energy and I don't have like a family or anything like that. So like, I take right now is like a really good opportunity to work as much as I can and mm -hmm. try to get as far ahead as possible for who knows, like if I have a family or something like that, things might change. So. How many hours a day do you think you work? Um, I mean, at first it was, it was pretty rough. I'd probably come in at like eight and leave at like 10 PM, but now uh, probably like 10 or 12 hours. Not too mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. Uh, so, so what advice could you give an aspiring entrepreneur? You know, somebody just is itching to, open their own business and maybe, maybe it's a, you know, since you know, food business, um, what would you tell them? Like, go for it, go for it. Just be, just, but just be ready for it because, um, uh, cause it's, it's a lot of work and you have to be obsessed. You have to be, cause when you first start out, you're going to have to be put in like at least 14 hour days. It's going to be crazy. But if you love what you're doing, it's not going to feel like work and it will be a little bit stressful and it's going to be hard. But at the end of the day, a lot of people do it. So, I mean, you could do it as well. Right. A lot of people do it, but a lot of people don't succeed in doing that it as well. True. But I, it does, you got to take a shot. I mean, don't live with that regret of not doing something just because you're scared of the work. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to do it. Okay. And what would you advise them as far as uh, being able to you know, put, to, put you know, make it financially work? Uh, be really good at sticking to your budget. And um, really, before you enter that venture, you really have to have it all laid out. Like you have to know how much you expect in selling your labor cost, your supply, um, your cost of goods and all that, and have an idea of what you want to like profit at the end of the day and, and how much money you're going to invest in it because you got to make sure you make that back as well. And just be, be really like grounded in like your financials. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it sounds like you are much more prepared than a lot of other <laughs> business owners I've met. As I said, you did sort of know what you were getting yourself into, but nonetheless, the financial aspect really trips up a lot of yeah for me when i was i mean i was really obsessed with this whole thing like in college i would just make a ton of like excel sheets with like a whole bunch of like stuff and i had like a good idea of how much we sold due to the food truck so 
because a lot of people who are just starting out, I mean, you have no clue. You have no like customer base. I had a little bit easier because we did have a customer base and somewhat of like a financial like history. So I just like guessed and it kind of worked out. So I didn't guess. I wasn't too far off. Okay. Uh, well, that's great. Uh, a lot of people who uh, start businesses, they draft some kind of business plan and it ends up being wildly different once they open the door mm. than they expected. But, but in your case, it actually more or less worked out. Mm-hmm. And, and like, I would say again, like, I, I think I was, I was able to be successful a lot easier due to like my grandfather and my aunt and my, and my mom, because I mean, without them, I, I don't think I'd be in the position I am right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, what, what else did you consider doing? Um, so the whole plan was, I remember when I was 17, I decided to do hospitality management because um, I wanted to live on a beach somewhere, like some Spanish speaking place and like work at a hotel. And then I ended up going to Penn State and then I got into these like entrepreneurship classes and that's when my mind really changed and I saw that I could use that degree to help me here. Mm, okay. And I, I guess in the end, that's a good thing. Are, do, you, do you have any regrets? Not at all. No, no, no. I do the same thing again. Oh, well, okay. Uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> good. Um, and how about somebody who uh, specifically was concerned about opening a business in, in Harrisburg? What would you tell them? Um, just do your research and I mean, scope out your competition, try to like, I mean, when it comes to like the prices, I mean, you'd be like on par with other businesses unless you have something super magical. And I mean, yeah, just do that. I mean, it's all, it's all competition based. So just see who you're going to be competing against and try to beat them. Yeah. Who are you competing against? Um, I mean, so we have like Taco Amigos is on second street and basically any other restaurant, but I mean, just them. And I mean, oh, there is, I mean, there's a soul over there. And they're a little bit different since they're like more full service. But basically those restaurants, there's Tres Hermanos on Cameron Street. Um, Tacos Mi Tierra on 13. I know all the taco places around. <laughs> so. uh-huh. but there's a lot of them. I mean, that's who you're competing with. Yeah. People in like your same cuisine. But at the end of the day, all restaurants kind of, any quick service. Yeah. Do you have any ambition to open a full service restaurant? Uh, eventually, yeah. I think when I'm when I get older, I'd like to have like a full service restaurant, with, like a nice bar and all that. Mm-hmm. But not right now. Right now, I'm I'm really into like this whole masa concept because it's um it's relatively cheap to open and it's I think it's gonna be easy to replicate. You don't have to staff too much either, and it's um it's quick. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. It Very was good. a delight talking to you and learning all about the history of uh, your business. Thank you, and thank you all for having me. <laughs>